guys, welcome to part two of my deck profile. Uh, I recently completed my ABCs as well, and I'm here to show the uh, deck profile. So without further ado, let's go. <laughs> to start out, I have two Assault Core, three Buster Drake, and two Crush Vivern. Uh, the reason I run 2-3-2 instead of uh, most people's 3-3-3 three, three, three <laughs> is because, first of all, for Crush Vivern's case, it's not self-sufficient, and sometimes if I open like multiple copies of it, and I don't have a field spell, it's just really annoying to uh, deal with as it bricks my hand. A Assault Core is a bit better because at worst it's still a 1900 beater, but even then, uh, both of them are searchable by Buster Drake anyway, and Assault Core is only good in like the mid to late game. And on the first turn, if you don't open the field spell with it, it doesn't really like do anything by itself. <laughs> Next, I run one Heavy Mech Support Armor. This card is really underrated. Essentially, first of all, it's searchable via both Union Hanger and uh, Buster Drake. And also, it counts as the target for Crush Vibrant. So if you have a Crush Vibrant equipped with a Buster Drake, and while well, you have this card in hand, and these two cards are linked away, you can actually activate C Chain Link 1, B Chain Link 2, and then search a Soul Core from your deck. And this, uh, the resolution of C's effect, you summon a Soul Core. <laughs> So yeah, uh, and also when you normal summon this, you can actually special summon back one of your uh, ABC pieces in your graveyard. And this is really good because this turns this card into a one card link too. And since all your ABC pieces are floaters anyway, it also triggers their graveyard effects. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> Next up for the monster hand traps, have three Ash Blossom Joy of Spring. I actually managed to get a French copy of this card and... Uh, if you end up playing against me and I use this against you, please don't rule shark me and demand a uh, English translation because we're in Canada right now and French is an official language. But Ash Blossom is definitely good to finally be able to get this card. Before I was missing it, it was really annoying when my opponent tries to search a uh, play a card that adds something from their deck to their hand, and I literally have to sit there and let it, let it through. Now I can essentially stop them with my Ash Blossoms. In it, also, I run still have the three Ghost Ogre. It's a secondary hand trap, and they it it's hard to compare to Ash Blossom because they do different things. Ash Blossom negates searching effects, while Ghost Ogre destroys uh, cards on their on the activation of their effects, but does not stop the resolution. But I run both of these because again, like uh, they complement each other. So that's it for the monsters. <laughs> For the spells, I still obviously run the three copies of Union Hanger. This card is still uh, uh, one of the best field spells in the game. And when you normal summon an ABC piece, or even your Heavy Mech Support Armor, you can immediately equip one of your other ABC pieces, or your uh, Support Armor to it. And when you first activate it the first time, it's essentially a plus one, and it essentially searches one of your uh, ABC pieces, or even the uh, Heavy Mech Support Armor, from your deck to your hand, so it's really good. <laughs> Next, I run two terraforming because again, if I could run three, I would run three. If I could run ten, I would run ten. Okay, but unfortunately, it's only it's limited to two, so I can only run two. <laughs> I do not run the sky striker engine, but I do run three instant fusions and one scapegoat. These are all really good combo pieces to uh be played with because <clears throat> instant fusion it allows you access to really good fusion monsters and uh from your extra deck and that gives you a lot of utility when you just need that extra one monster to go for an exceed summon uh, or, or a link summon <laughs> and scapegoat it does essentially the same thing except it's with tokens and since i've run cards like a link uh karibo which i will uh, show later on uh there are definitely combos to be uh used with uh these cards <laughs> Now onto the more generic spell cards, I run Raigeki, Dark Hole, Monster Reborn. <laughs> All of them are good cards. And uh, Raigeki, Dark Hole, Board Wipes, they're obviously uh, really good. Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twisters. I really hate it when my opponent just auto wins against me because they got a Floodgate out. So these two cards help me deal with those Floodgates. They also help me deal with back row. Run one Foolish Burial because there are so many times when you have two of your three pieces in the graveyard, but you're just missing the third piece. And if you top deck this, it's literally like you can just got out a free Dragon Buster, essentially. And the last card's Upstar Goblin again, because it turns this deck from a 40 card deck into a 39 card deck. And even if it's a small difference, even if it's that one in every thousand or ten thousand games, 
I'd rather have that uh, like slight uh, advantage in being able to get to my combo pieces faster. And at worst, it's uh, it's doesn't it doesn't hurt you. It just gets you the next card. And the one thousand light point gain it might might seem significant, but like one attack from Dragon Buster is like more than three is three times that anyway. So <laughs> yeah. Next up for the traps, I actually run more traps than most people do, but the uh, for the first seven traps I run include Solemn Judgment, Solemn Warning, three Solemn Strikes. These Solemn cards are uh, still haven't been completely power creep and they're still really good. So I run them. Next, I run two Infinite and Permanents. These are like the hand trap trap cards of the deck, and if I run them in two copies in both my Cyber Dragons and my ABCs, and essentially. Uh, if you count these as hand traps, then that means I've run a total of 8 hand traps in this deck. Therefore, it does not automatically lose if it went second. And next 3 trap cards, which I could probably could consider cutting, are Metaverse, Torture Tribute, and Back to the Front. The reason I run Metaverse is because uh, terraforming is semi-limited, and sometimes I need that extra card to help me search out my uh, field spells. And this deck, uh, the way I built this deck is that it's strong enough defensively to not get OTK'd even if you don't open the field spell. But say you open up Metaverse and a whole bunch of ABC pieces but no field spell, you can essentially use the ABC pieces defensively, like Sea Crush Wyvern for instance. That gives you some chump blocking capabilities. <laughs> and then uh, during, uh, if your opponent tries to attack into it, you can play Metaverse, put the field spell onto the field, and if your Crush Wyvern dies and you special summon a second piece from the hand, <laughs> Uh, it, if it's not uh, destroyed during the dam, as long as it's not destroyed during the damage step, you can use Union Hangers effect to equip uh, another piece from the deck to to this piece that was summoned. So it, it works really well if your uh, if your opponent tries to board wipe you with a Dark Hole or a Raigeki. But uh, at worst, like if you activate this card during your opponent's end phase, it acts just like a terraforming, and you still get this card to your hand. <laughs> Torture Tribute is essentially a board wipe where your opponent tries to summon a monster, you give them a board wipe. It doesn't really affect you that much since your ABC pieces are floaters, and they're just as useful to you in the graveyard as you can banish them from the graveyard or field to summon your boss monster. And back to the front, it's like a trap version of Monster Reborn, which, again, you can use to revive your Dragon Buster or your ABC pieces as a last resort option if you're about to get uh, OTK'd. So yeah, that's it for the main deck. Let me show uh, you my uh, <coughs> extra and side deck. For the extra deck, you obviously run three copies of ABC Dragon Buster. This card is the boss monster of this deck, and it definitely uh, lives up to its hype. 3,000 attack and two quick effects uh, that essentially let you banish your opponent's mon that can let you either banish your opponent's monster or a spell or trap card, or uh, during your opponent's turn, if your opponent tries targeting removal on this thing, you can tribute it and get your three ABC pieces back, immediately setting you up for a second Dragon Buster next turn. <laughs> and the three pieces also protect you from your opponent's uh, attacks, and at worst, if they survive, you can link them for a Deco Talker, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, summon and summon a second dragon buster and essentially you just went uh got two powerful monsters instead of one <laughs> next up for a uh, fusion monster one one thousand eyes restrict and one panzer dragon <laughs> uh thousand eyes restrict is also a link karibo target which is really good and also it offers a uh, non-destruction removal so you can steal one of your opponent's uh really powerful monsters that protected from destruction and then link it away for uh link karibo and one thing I, f I just uh, re uh, realized uh, regarding rulings that Thousand Eyes Restrict is that if you Ghost Ogre to response to Thousand Eyes Restrict's effect, the targeted monster is still sent to the graveyard because it becomes an equip spell that loses a target, and by default it's sent to the graveyard. <laughs> Panzer Dragon is a machine type, a light machine type, so you can definitely link with it for cards like Summon Sorceress and whatnot. <laughs> now that's it for the fusion monsters. For the uh, Link monsters, uh, I run 10. So I do not have Boro Sword Dragon, but I do have Boro Load. And this card is arguably the next best thing. It might, might not be able to close out games like Boro Sword does, but it does a it is able to break boards and its protection effect of like anti-targeting protection is much better than Boro Sword's anti-battle, destruction by battle. 
protection. <laughs> Next up, we're one Sarah Yuja Skaldred. This is arguably the best Link Four in the game, and in certain situations, it's even better than Borlo Dragon. <laughs> like being able to draw four cards from your deck is never a bad thing, and getting an extra special summon every single turn is also really nice to have. And speaking of special summons, I run Summon Sorceress. Uh, I really hope this card does not get banned because if it does, I'm gonna need to uh completely try to remake this, uh, rebuild this deck again. Right now, there's a really nice three-card combo you can use with Summon Sorceress that sets you up with a Deco Talker and two Dragon Busters, <laughs> which I'll show later. And uh, speaking of Deco Talker, obviously run one Deco Talker. And uh, the rest of the Link monsters are pretty generic. I run Hip Ho Shining Gin because all my monsters are light. <laughs> Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Cerberus. <laughs> uh, these cards can actually help you facilitate an extra Link if you know how to play it right. I run a one Cleaver Genius uh, because again it's a machine and it's protected, uh, built in protection from spell trap cards. And the last uh, two Link monsters I run are one Reparodicus for the Summon Sorcerer's place and one Link Karibo because again, like uh, it's never a bad card to have. <laughs> now onto the side deck. <laughs> onto the side deck, I run two Kumongus Kaiju. <laughs> uh, this card is actually uh, it's uh, I. Uh, most people run Gamma Seal over this card, but again, Gamma Seal is overpriced. And Kumongus is the next best thing. It does have uh, 200 more attack points. And yes, I admit, 200 attack points can sometimes easily make the difference between winning and losing. But in the context of this deck, uh, it doesn't really make a difference. Because Dragon Buster's 3000 is going to be stronger than either 2400 or 2200. <laughs> And it still functions the same way as uh, all kaijus do. So next, I run three Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Uh, this card is uh, really uh, useful because it essentially it takes out the best card in your opponent's extra deck. Which, if you're playing against Salamangre, will be their Sunlight Wolf. And if you're playing against Sky Strikers, will be their Kagari. And against Thunder Dragons, it will be their Thunder Dragon Colossus. I currently do not have those cards with me right now. But if I ever get them, I'll probably like uh, remove like the Kumongus Kaiju for them. Next up, I run three Cyphering Gear Gamma because uh, again, like hand traps is never a bad thing, and one Driver to make the Gammas work. And the last uh, six cards I run for my side deck are three Called by the Grave, <laughs> in order to deal with graveyard decks, and I also run three Red Reboot to deal with trap card heavy decks. And uh, Red Reboot, it does have a side effect that if you don't win that turn, you're essentially giving your opponent an advantage. But if you're able to stop your opponent from using trap cards for a whole turn, and their deck is primarily reliant on using trap cards to stun you, then essentially you just won the game at that point. Now let me show you a really nice combo you can do with uh, ABCs. <laughs> for this combo, you need one of A, B, or C. It doesn't matter which. A way to get to your Union Hanger... And uh, you, you're going to need a way to get another monster onto the field. <laughs> so let's say you open uh, Crush Wyvern, Terraforming, and uh, Instant Fusion. Let's say these are the three cards you open. You First, you activate your Terraforming. <laughs> adding Union Hanger to your hand. Now you activate the Union Hanger. And when Union Hanger is activated, if you have Crush Wyvern in hand or Buster Drake in hand, you will search your Assault Core. And if you have a Salkorn hand, you can search either one of these. But I would prefer a uh, Buster Drake. So in this case, let's say you have a uh, Crush Wyvern. So you search a Salkorn hand. You'll normal summon the uh, Crush Wyvern. Activate Union Hanger to equip Buster Drake to it. So there goes your normal summon. Then you activate Instant Fusion to pay a thousand life points. And depending on what your opponent has, if your opponent has an empty field, you will go into your Panzer Dragon. <laughs> But if your opponent does not have an empty field, you can go into Thousand Eyes Restrict, actually Thousand Eyes Restrict's effect, steal one of their monsters, and then link it for a Link Rebo. But let's say this is your first turn and they have an empty field, so you will have Panzer Dragon. So since both of these are machine type monsters, you're going to link both of these away, and you're going to summon out your <laughs> Cleaford Genius. And since uh, A and uh, B and C hit the graveyard at the same time, and you have A Assault Core in hand, you're going to activate C as Chainlink 1, B as Chainlink 2. So at this point, you're going to search a second Crush Wyvern from your deck to your hand. 
And upon the first Crush Wyvern's res effect resolution, you're going to summon the second Crush Wyvern. Then since uh, Cleaver Genius and Crush Wyverns are still both machines, you're going to link both of these away and go into <laughs> the best rank, uh, link 3 uh, monster in your deck, Summon Sorceress. So now since a second Crush Wyvern hit the graveyard, you're going to special summon a Assault Core from your hand and make sure it's really important to be point a zone that a summon sorcerer is pointing to. If you summon it like here or here, where summon sorcerer is not pointing to it, this combo will not work. So summon sorcerer is now pointing to a light machine type monster. You're going to activate summon sorcerer's effect to summon a second light machine type monster from your deck, and you're going to go for B Buster Drake. <laughs> now you're going to link these three away in order to summon out your Deco Talker. And since Buster Drake hit the graveyard, it will add you a second A Assault Core from your deck to your hand. And now at this point, your graveyard should contain A, B, and C. You're going to banish these, summon out your first ABC Dragon Buster. And if your opponent has any cards in their uh, on their field, you're going to activate Dragon Buster's effect, discarding Assault Core to banish their card. So now they have one less card to deal with you. And now you're going to go A, B, C again. And summon your second ABC Dragon Buster, and assuming that this is your uh you're the player going second, and your opponent has an open board at this point, this is over nine thousand. Yes, I'm going to use that meme. This is over nine thousand points of damage. So there you have it. This is my uh, ABC Dragon Buster deck profile. I have one more deck profile coming up uh in the next little while, so stay tuned for that. But other than that, uh, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.